Welcome back to the channel. It's really good to have you here today. So I'm back from my trip to Denmark and like I said in the previous videos, we've got some tools that I've been sent here on the channel and today I want to trial these tools with you and give you my honest review on them. To start with then, a little bit about the tools. So I've teamed up with a guy called Mark who owns the company Kronos Tools and he's really kindly supplied me with some 10 and 20 mil shank lathe tools. So with the intention today of trialing these out and seeing just how good these tools are for the home hobbyist. So here we have the first set of tools that I'm really excited to try out. These are 20 mil shank tools and they're made by a company called Glans. Overall I'm pretty impressed with the whole packaging. It's got these nice little carry cases to store the tools in and it's got a nice array of tools. What also I really like is the fact that they're all using these CCMT inserts. So what that means is if one of these inserts break and you've got no spares, you can quite quickly swap it off one of the tools that you don't use that often and keep going for the rest of the machining operation. So in this set we've got six turning tools and one internal turning bar. And generally, so far, these look like pretty good tools. Moving over to the tools that I think are going to be more suitable for the majority of you guys are the tools for the mini lathes. So here we've got a 3 8 inch set, which is about 9.5mm. And over here we've got a 10mm set. So the 3 8 set, it doesn't actually have a make on the box. So I'm not sure if this is one of their sort of like kits that they make up in-house. But you get quite a good array of tools in here actually. Over here we've got a threading tool, we've got a parting tool, a knurling tool and then a set of these TCMT insert tooling with varying angles on. So pretty good little starter set there. And then moving over to the other set which I'm really impressed with is again glance tools and again these are DCMT inserts but slightly smaller grade of insert and a similar thing again they've got all varying different cutting angles on these tools so you can use them for turning down, chamfering, grooving and again if one of these inserts is to break you can swap it out for one that you don't use that often and keep going for that little tool or project. And finally a set that I got sent which I've never really used that much but I understand is a sort of cheap budget option is these braised carbide insert tooling. So I think this is one of the only sets I actually quickly looked up to see how much it was online and I think this set sets you back about £15. So if you wanted to get into machining this is a really good and quick way of doing it. It's not something that I went down the route of. I prefer to go with the insert type tooling but if the budget is tight and you need some carbide tooling to turn down some tough material, then this may be a good option. Again, the shank is a 10mm shank on these tools, and we've got varying different types of cutting profile. So we've got some right and left handed cutting tools, parting tools, chamfering and grooving tools. So a pretty good budget option if you're looking at getting into machining. After taking a look at the tools then, my first impressions are these seem like really good quality tools for the home hobbyist. The make of these tools exactly are glans, or glans depending on how you want to pronounce that, and they're pretty good make actually for the home hobbyist. So I'll leave a link in the description for all the tools displayed and tested that we'll be doing today, and hopefully if you think they're good, go check them out. To begin with then, I think we're going to start by testing out the 20mm glans tools, and to do so we're going to head over to the Harrison M300 lathe, and we're just going to test it on a few um, cuts. We'll be doing it in steel, aluminium, varying depths of cut and varying speed rate. And we'll see how these tools hold up. After that I'm going to take the 10 and 3 8 inch shanked tools over to the mini lathe. And we'll do a similar test over there where we'll be testing out how deep they can cut. And also stuff like surface finish. So, hope you enjoy this video today guys. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. A little bit about the setup today before we get started. So I'm going to be running the lathe at 540 RPM and taking incremental cuts as I go. I think what we're going to be doing to get the best sort of overall performance of the tool, 
I'm going to go up in one mil increments until the tool seems like it maxes out. So I'm going to be running this test with the glands left hand turning tool just because I think that's the tool you guys will probably use the most in your home workshops and at the end I'll give you an overall opinion on how the tool performed and what was the best sort of depth of cut for surface finish. So with that in mind let's jump straight into it. So the one mil depth of cut seems to be handling this with no problems. Small chips breaking off and given what seems to be a fairly good surface finish. Bearing in mind this is just a mild steel shaft, low carbon. It doesn't surprise me that it's having no issues taking chunks out of this. So this is two mil depth of cut. So that 3 mil, the chips seem to be coming off there in a lot more smaller manacle sections. Really nice colour and the surface finish is even better than the 1 mil depth of cut. This is 3 mil depth of cut. At 3mm DOC then, I've had to slow down the feed rate of the lathe and also introduce some oil just to keep the tip of that tool nice and cool. But again, the surface finish is really nice that this is the tool's leaving and it seems to be managing it really well. So, so far so good. Be interesting to see how it manages a 4mm depth of cut after this test. 4 mil depth of cut then. So surprisingly the tool is handling that 4 mil depth of cut really easy. Chips maybe on the little bit of the hot side, but overall, tool performance wise, chips are breaking nicely. And again, it's given a really good surface finish. Unfortunately, by the time I managed to hit record on the camera, it was too late. The 5mm depth of cut just got so much chatter, I had to stop it there. Probably due to the stick out and the fact that I've only got some tail support. But that was quite a good test to start off with in this mild steel. This lathe tool actually held up really well. And given the fact that the insert is only held down by this single screw, unlike the clamp type tools I normally work with on this big lathe, that's actually really good. So surface finish, the one mil started off a bit iffy, but after that the surface finish gradually improved. So I think this tool definitely works better with a greater depth of cut given the feed rate I was using it with. And generally, I'm quite happy of how this tool performed in this steel bar. I am still quite curious of how deep this tool can cut, so I'm going to flip this out now for some 6061 aluminium and we're going to give that a go with some short stick out and see what depth of cut we can achieve given that this tool has done a 5mm depth of cut with a lot of stick out in mild steel. Right then, I've got a small off cut of 6061 aluminium. Uh, about 50mm bar stock there. And Going to run some depths of cut into this to see what this tool maxes out at. So I'm going to start off with 5mm and maybe we'll go up in 2mm increments and we'll see how we go. I'm going to move you guys down to the end of the lathe just because I've only got a little bit of stick out here so I need to be quick on the foot pedal. 5mm depth of cut. So at 5mm, cuts through that aluminium really easy, but just bunches up a lot. Let's try 7mm. So 
So it's seven mil, still not breaking any chips, but seems to eat that up really easy. So I think given the fact that that's taking that material off really easy, gonna go straight in for a 10 mil depth of cut and we'll see how that goes. Well, that was a really impressive test actually. Thinking a five mil depth of cut was fairly deep was nothing by the time we got to the end, 10 mil, and it made these massive chips. So that's pretty cool. That's the biggest depth of cut I've ever done on a lathe. And it's impressive to see the amount of material as it's coming off of there. So I think for now, we're gonna leave the tool testing on the 20 mil shank tools. And I think we'll head over to the good old mini lathe well, we'll be testing out some tools over there and seeing what they're like because they're the tools I think you guys are really going to benefit from watching the channel because I know a lot of you guys have mini laves out there. So it should be good for you guys to see what these tools are all about. Unlike the Harrison M300 then, where we just tested the tools out to see what sort of maximum depth of cut and finish they can get, on the mini lave I don't really want to do that because you don't own a mini lave wanting to max out a depth of cut your own a mini lathe for the convenience and all the different types of little tooling you can get. So to start off with, we're going to be trying the Glans left hand turning tool and I can actually say that these fit into these tool holders that I've got really nice. So it might be a case of actually after this, I swap out a lot of my odd and sods tools for these Glans tools. So I'm going to start with a left hand turning operation I'm then going to check out the chamfer tools that comes in the kit and also trying out the parting tool. So let's see how this goes. So just going to try a 0.25mm depth of cut. It's been a while since I hand fed like this. So yeah, 0.25 mil seem to take off some nice chunks on that. Going to step it up now and just do a 0.5 mil depth of cut, just to see how that goes. And then I think we'll call this tool good. So this section here is still going to be 0.25 mil depth of cut. And now going up to 0.5 mil. Overall, that's pretty good surface finish there on a mini lathe. Not too bad. So something that's really good and convenient about these tools is they all seem to have the same centre height for the tool itself. So what that means is if you're limited for tool holders, you can just switch these tools out fairly quickly, given that the same tool holder. So I'm going to switch this out now for a chamfer tool, and we'll test it out, putting some chamfers on here, and also a few plunge cuts. Back with the chamfering tool now then. Let's see how this thing performs. So it seems to put a nice light chamfer on there. Got a little bit of chatter there as we started going a bit deeper. But for putting a chamfer on parts, that works really nice. And let's just try a plunging in and seeing how that goes. So getting a little bit of chatter there, so probably not ideal tool to be plunging in, but leaves not a bad little finish. So that's chamfering and turning down. Finally, what I want to check is just check out the parting tool. See if we can part this off nicely. And just one last thing on these tools, the finish on the tool themselves, this black coating that they've put on, seems really nice. I don't know if that's an actual coating or if it's like a black oxide, but whatever it is, seems like a really nice finish to their tool and really nice the way that they label it up, making it easy to find inserts online.
Now we've done some turning down with these tools and some chamfering. Now it's time for parting off. And I was a bit misunderstood earlier. I said about this set of tools being like a generic set of tools that Mark puts together. And actually it's just because the, the labeling on here is, I wasn't too sure in it. Turns out all these tools are also made by Glans. These are just the 3 8 inch shanked ones. So I'm gonna be testing out the parting tool. I've always had problems with this on the mini lathe parting. It's always something that's a bit of a bum clencher given the small capacity of these lathes and the fact that you normally do parting at low RPM means these lathes don't have that much torque. But let's give this a go, parting this off. So I'm gonna come on where we have this chamfer line here and see if we can part this off. So locking the carriage. I'll drop that down a bit more. It's pretty good there, 400 RPM. And let's start parting. Ooh, lots of chatter there. That's not good. Let's go a bit slower. Well, it's really not liking that. Put a little bit of oil on there, see if that helps. Right, well, it's really not liking that, this little lathe. So I think I've found the issue in that the normal parting tool I use here on the lathe has a two mil parting blade in it. And it's also, if you look at the profile of it, it's sort of like a neutral rake as such. The parting tool in this kit, it's a two and a half mil parting tool and it's also got a bit of positive rake on it. So I think, to be honest, this parting tool is a little bit too aggressive for the mini lathe. It might be perfectly fine in brass and aluminium, but for mild steel here, this is an EN3 bar. It's getting a bit dicey. So I think I'm gonna leave that one, that little test for now, and sort of sum up the video. There we have it then, guys. My quick rundown today of the Glans tools that Mark sent me from Kronos Tools. So once again, Mark, thank you so much for sending me those tools and supporting the channel. Hopefully a few of you guys watching, go over to his website and check out his tools. He's got loads over there suited for the home hobbyist. So that's been a great little test to do today. A few things just to end the video on. So I'm gonna be giving a free giveaway in the next couple of videos. So I'm gonna be sending one of you lucky guys this carbide tool set. So all you've gotta to do to win that carbide tool set is keep an eye out for the machinist hammer that I made in my previous video. I'm gonna hide this in the corner of one of the screens as I'm recording. And the first person to email me and say that they've seen this will win themselves a set of carbide braze tooling. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, a few more things going on the channel. As we're moving into the winter, I really wanna get the steam engine build done. I know a lot of you guys have spoke about that. So I'm thinking about doing some live streaming on a Wednesday night. So let me know what you guys think to that in the comments below. That should be pretty cool to get that done. So other than that, that about sums up this video. If you're interested in any of the tools that you've seen in today's video, please I'll leave a link in the description below. Check it out, maybe buy yourself a nice new set of lathe tooling. Other than that guys, have a good week and I'll see you in the next video.